Welcome to a new season of UEN's Professional Development Television. I'm your new host, Katie Blunt, and I'm excited to share with you a slightly new format for PDTV. This season, each episode will focus on one of Utah's education technology competencies. We'll start by explaining the competency, then showing you the competency in action, and finally, helping you know how you can apply that competency in your own district, school, or classroom. So, for this first episode, we thought we'd better introduce you to the new EdTech competencies. Let's visit with Rick Gaysford at the Utah State Board of Education to learn more. We're here with Rick Gaysford at the Utah State Board of Education. Rick is the USBE Education Technology Specialist. Thanks for joining us today, Rick. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. Well, we wanted to ask you a little bit about competency-based endorsements. It's my understanding that USBE is moving toward competency-based endorsements. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means and what competency-based endorsements are all about? It's really a started with the State Board of Education looking and reimagining education going forward in the, ne you know, in the next years. Uh, and that it started with things like portrait of a graduate and then the move for personalized competency-based uh, education. And we felt that it was also important for teachers to be able to have that ability to demonstrate their competency in how to teach subject areas. So it sounds like that demonstration piece is really the key difference between the old endorsement program and the new endorsement program. Is there anything else that's different about the two? As you look at the old way of doing things, it was really built upon the premise that a teacher needed to take certain courses um, and, 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 and then that would be the determiner of whether they had the necessary skills. But really there was nothing about it being demonstrated, it's just that they had to take the course. And so in this new paradigm that we're going to be working with, teachers will be demonstrating their competency in an area, whether that be science, or social studies, or technology, that they not only have the skills and the knowledge, but they can also demonstrate that by working with students in the classroom. So um, give us a summary of what the new ed tech competencies are. The first competency is really the foundation of instructional design and pedagogy. Those classes in, you know, the things like designing a curriculum, how to effectively use technology, um, we looked at, uh, and then the pedagogy of how to effectively utilize that technology in the classroom. The second area we began, we began to focus on was professional growth and uh, leadership. So with professional growth and leadership, it's not just enough to be able to you know, start using the technology, but can you lead with that technology? That's really what we're trying to do is to help uh, districts and schools to be able to develop capacity going forward. And so in, in this area, you know, it's teachers not only receiving instruction, but also learning to give instruction on how to effectively use technology with students. The third area is, is about supporting and, and the development of 21st century skills. Those typical things like collaboration, communication, uh, creativity, uh, and that are a, part of, are a part of that. And we've built competencies around each of those areas. And then the last area, of course, is information and media literacy, which I think is one of the most important competencies going forward, is to make sure that not only can teachers be literate with all the information that we now have, but most importantly, that students are able to really de you know, have that skill so that they can determine what is fact and what is fiction. So teachers who want to improve their practice how can they use the ed tech competencies to improve their teaching and their professional learning? Not only are these skills important you know, for teachers who want to be able to effectively use technology, but these are really becoming important skills for all students. It doesn't matter what job that they are going to be going into, technology is a given. It's going to be a part of that. Being able to effectively utilize technology, effectively tell stories, effectively communicate, are essential 
no matter what subject, no matter what profession that one might find themselves in. Now that we know more about the EdTech competencies, let's take a look at these competencies in action. We're going to visit with Dr. Krista Ruggles and Dr. Susie Cox at Utah Valley University to find out how they're using the competencies in their teacher preparation programs. We are excited to be here with Krista Ruggles and Susie Cox, professors in the School of Education. Thanks for letting us join you today. Thanks for coming. Thanks so much. So let's jump right in. How are you using standards and competencies in your teacher preparation programs here at UVU? Good question. So I teach in the first semester in the elementary program and our students are juniors when they enter the program and they take a course called Equitable Technology Integration. We, we've been um, organizing the course with the ISTE standards for about the past six years. And um, now we have these new competencies. And uh, what we actually did was we, we took a look and um, wanted to see how they uh, aligned with the ISTE standards. And so we actually found out um, that all of the uh, competencies align perfectly with the ISTE standards and what we've always, always been doing. So that's really exciting for us. Yeah, so the competencies are new for everybody. And so I love that you've pointed out the, that the concepts are not new and that they fit in with what you were already doing. That's fantastic. Really what they've allowed us to do is focus instead on these high level ideas of what could be done with technology, really to think about what an individual teacher in their classroom could do, like what that would look like in their classroom. So to translate that into the pre-service program, I teach the same class at the secondary level and really to get our students who are going to be teachers thinking about what this will actually look like in their classrooms, in their practice. I love that, which is what competencies are all about, right? So you mentioned the class that you teach in elementary. Do things work a little differently in secondary ed? Yeah, so in our program at least, um, our elementary program is a traditional cohorted program. So they enter at a, as a junior, they take their classes in groups together, they're in the program for about a year and a half and then go do their student teaching, right? So we can give them a very clear sequence and amazingly, Krista's class takes place the very first yes. semester. So they're thinking from the very beginning about what integrating technology in a really equitable and meaningful way looks like. Secondary is a little different, yeah. So our students typically come in right as they're finishing their content area major. Um, and they still take their content area methods class over in their content area. So we don't really have much control over what happens there. Uh, and then the students can take their courses in any order they wish to. So we, we recommend that they take this class early in the program, but we can't control that. So it does add a little layer of uh, complexity as we try to help kids both learn how to lesson plan and learn technology integration at the same time. It, yeah, it just gets a little bit more complex. So what does all of this look like in elementary then? Right, so after they get the foundation in my class, um, in their next semester, their Math Methods 1 course, we have a, an amazing faculty member who embeds robotics in her course. So she's using Code and Go Mice to show how to teach students how to count and Ozobots for measurement. And then we also have a lot of faculty who have really embraced a lot of the online teaching tools, especially since the pandemic. So a lot of our faculty are using Nearpod now and um, Flipgrid and, and trying to use the tools that are out there in the schools too. Amazing. So I love all the pieces coming together in this course. Like you said, understanding the standards and that what we do is based on them, the lesson planning, the hands-on activities, which really is where the competencies come in is exactly. doing and trying things out. And it's all happening as then they go, at, right before they go out to actually do this in schools. So it seems to me that you're creating a new kind of graduate <laughs> from these programs. <laughs> what do you think that this is going to do for these new teachers as they enter the workforce? Yeah, our hope is that they're leaders from their first year. And yeah. we already have evidence of our students being leaders. We have one alumni who was asked to do professional development the first, <laughs> the first week of school, uh, her first year teaching. And that just is, very rewarding for yeah. us to know that we prepared her to be able to do that. That's amazing. 
That's really great. Well, so that makes me realize that there are some teachers already in our workforce who haven't had this same background in their um, college programs. So what advice can you give to LEAs who want to also incorporate standards, who are also looking at these new competencies and trying to incorporate it into their professional learning programs. Any advice? Yeah, we really feel like any systemic change has to come from the ground up, that it has to come from the teachers and then go up from there. And luckily we do have teachers in every building, whether they're graduates from our program or they're teachers who've been attending USET every year or whoever they may be, who've developed this passion and these competencies themselves, or maybe already have an ed tech endorsement, mm -hmm. right? Um, so leveraging those teachers as models and as you know peer helpers and, and providing the professional development in the building Building, um, being people that, that teachers can turn to and look at what does it look like to implement these competencies in your classroom. That is a much more powerful change agent than some administrator coming in and say, you're going to start doing this, right? So really empowering those teacher leaders to take that role of modeling and mentorship. Um, and then just being careful about how fast you're trying to move, right? So many times we go to a conference or we get an endorsement, we feel like we have to do everything all at once. And, and that's just really not a sustainable model. It's, it's gonna burn us out as teachers. And so really being careful about choosing things that are gonna be the most meaningful, whether that's aligning to language art standards that talk about choosing the right media for the message, whether it's aligning to our math standards and that data visualization that scares us all, right? <laughs> But, but those are, you know, two key pieces that if we just start with those simple pieces, we can start to branch out and really start to make wider change. Yeah. Now, Krista, you mentioned going through the competencies, aligning them with the ISTE standards and the four C's that you were already using. So to Susie's point, did you find areas where you thought, oh, actually, we're doing really well here and areas that you needed to focus on? Right. I, again, I think we were definitely addressing the four C's and also TPAC. TPAC is a bit the foundation of our course, of course. Um, but I noticed that we were missing um, the foundational um, understanding of digital literacy. And that's something that I, I want to talk to faculty about um, to help them address that in their own courses. So. I think that's a great model then of what you're saying. Find those spots. Is it ELA and math integration? Is it digital media literacy where you can very first target progress? Yeah. Um, and as you said, <laughs> from the ground up. Um, so to me, that also means finding those teachers, like yes. you said, that are passionate, that are endorsed, who can help with that. Exactly. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us about your program, about standards? I think the big thing for us is that Everything we do is centered on equity. Our perspective on technology integration and computer science integration is equity focused. And so we want to make sure that no student in Utah is unprepared for college or for just the life around them that's so technology rich because our students didn't graduate from our program knowing what to do in their classes with technology because teachers weren't sure what to do. And so I think these competencies can really help us to target what we can do on a daily basis, what it looks like, so that every kid is getting the opportunity to prepare themselves for their future. Thank you so much for sharing about your program, all the wonderful things that you have been doing here at UVU. This has been a great conversation. Thank you. Well, we've learned a lot about the EdTech competencies and how they can be used in teacher preparation programs. So let's take a closer look how you can incorporate the competencies into your own professional learning. First, start by becoming familiar with the new education technology competencies and identify areas in which you can improve. You can find helpful resources on the Utah State Board of Education website, including a flyer explaining USBE's move to competency-based endorsements, the new EdTech endorsement application, and a complete list of the new EdTech competencies. Next, consider becoming EdTech endorsed. On page three of the EdTech endorsement flyer, you'll see a map of four different pathways you can take to earn your endorsement. By participating in a university course, 
by earning a master's degree in learning and technology, by demonstrating your competency through the earning of micro-credentials, or by completing an approved LEA endorsement pathway. Third, set professional learning goals tied to the competencies. Focusing on the EdTech competencies can help you improve your professional practice regardless of your participation in an official endorsement program. Identify how the new competencies can connect with existing standards like the Utah Effective Teaching Standards and the ISTE Standards for Educators and how they tie to your existing professional learning goals. Finally, put the competencies into practice. Remember, competencies are all about demonstration and implementation of best practices. Adopt a growth mindset. Make small adjustments in your professional practice. Try new things and reach out to your LEA specialists and coaches for help. Be sure to track your progress and celebrate successes. Thanks for watching this episode of UEN's PD TV. We're excited to dive into the competencies throughout this season. To access more professional development materials from UEN or to request a training, visit uen.org/development. Thank you and we'll see you next time.